I'm Steve Marshall, artist and pastor. And on this Easter morning, I want to share with you the good news of Jesus' resurrection and what his empty tomb means for us today. Years ago, I would take our confirmation class to the Shrine of St. Joseph in Yarnell to walk the Stations of the Cross. Each station is marked by a large wooden cross, and on each cross is a small sculpted relief depiction of that event in Christ's journey to Golgotha, and a metal plaque with the description, scripture verse, and prayer. At each station, we would pause, read the plaque, and meditate on what Jesus must have been experiencing at that time. At the end of the walk, there is a dramatic, life-size sculpture of Jesus nailed to the cross. You can't help but be affected by the scene. I know the youth found it to be a very moving experience, as it makes the events of Christ's crucifixion very real. The last station of the cross is the tomb. And it has always bothered me that the tomb contains within it a statue of the crucified Christ. I would have preferred an empty tomb, for that is what the disciples found that Easter morning. Far too many of us have gotten to the cross. We have known suffering, despair, heartbreak, and we have experienced the tomb, that cold, dark place where it seems life has left us alone. But the real message of Easter is the message of the empty tomb. And the word I want you to hear this morning is that Jesus still moves stones. First, Jesus moves the stone of fear. In Matthew's account of the resurrection, the first words of the angels to the frightened women at the tomb were, Do not be afraid. When they encounter the risen Christ, again, his words of comfort are, Do not be afraid. Fear is a powerful emotion. Fear causes us to live below our potential. It paralyzes us causes us to play it safe. It keeps us from taking risks. When you try and lead a safe and secure life, you often miss the great purpose for which you were made. Fear breaks down the trust we have with each other in relationships. We fear what people will think if we take a stand, if we go against the flow. Fear breaks down the trust we have in God. It's one thing to believe in God, but it's another thing to trust God. Jesus says, don't be afraid. What's the worst fear we have? Death. For there's something worse than death, to be dead while you're still alive. There are some people who have stopped growing, who are not really alive, but just existing. They're just taking up space. Jesus moves the stone of fear because he has defeated death. There is truly nothing to fear, nothing to limit your possibilities, nothing that can stop you from becoming everything God wants you to become. When Jesus moved that stone on Easter morning, he also moved every great stone that will ever block your path. Secondly, Jesus moves the stone of doubt. Doubt limits your possibilities. Doubt is the disease of, I can't do it. It is doubt that says, I can't overcome this problem in my life. I don't have the strength. I don't have the smarts. I don't have the resources. I can't do it. Doubt equals defeat. But Paul says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. You see, with Jesus, 
Anything is possible. God is a God who makes the impossible possible. A God who parts the seas so his people can walk through. Every problem you face has a God-given solution. So what's the problem you're facing right now? What limitation do you bring that is keeping you from becoming the person God created you to be? What doubts are keeping you from doing what you want to do in this life? Jesus can remove that stone of doubt. When the disciples found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty, they found hope. Doubts vanished. You see, the empty tomb proves Jesus was who he said he was. The importance of Christ is not in his teachings, but in his resurrection. If there is no resurrection, then Jesus was just another good teacher. But the resurrection is proof that he was who he said he was, God's son. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of this nation, a great man, nevertheless could not accept the miraculous elements in scripture. He edited his own special version of the Bible in which all references to the supernatural were deleted. Jefferson, in editing the Gospels, confined himself solely to the moral teachings of Jesus. The closing words of Jefferson's Bible are these. There laid they Jesus and rolled a great stone at the mouth of the sepulcher and departed. Well, thank God that that is not the way the story really ends. Thank God for Easter. The resurrection is what we base our faith on. It's the very heart of our faith. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then our faith is futile. In other words, our faith is powerless, meaningless, worthless. If Christ is not raised, there can be no faith in him. Who will follow a dead and defeated leader? A dead Christ could never inspire a living faith. If Christ is not raised, then evil has won, and there can be no hope. If Christ is not raised, then God is powerless, a fraud, perhaps even an illusion. If Christ is not raised, then there is no forgiveness. We are still in our sins, and death remains. But Paul emphatically states that Christ was raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who will be raised. In other words, what happened to Christ will happen to us. When that stone was rolled away, it changed everything. It changed the disciples from fearful men to courageous apostles. It changed our view of death from one of fear to one of hope. And it can change your life today and for all eternity. We all have doubts at times in our lives about ourselves and our own abilities, about our faith, even about God. But Jesus showed through his resurrection that he can move those stones of doubt. And then lastly, Jesus moves the stone of hopelessness. Hopelessness is the greatest stone we can face. It's the stone that can crush our dreams, crush the very life out of us. To give up hope is to give in to death because life no longer has any meaning. In my counseling classes, I learned that hopelessness is one of the major indicators of possible suicide. When people have lost hope, they often lose the will to live. 
Bad news can weigh us down. It can become a heavy burden that makes every hour a trial, that takes every ounce of our strength to simply get through the day. Those heavy stones can become stones of hopelessness. Hearing the news from the doctor, you have cancer. An accident victim hearing the words, you'll never walk again. A single mom out of work and the bills piling up. These are the stones of hopelessness. But the message of the empty tomb is one of exhilarating hope. Jesus rolled the stone away. And Jesus still moves stones today. And when that stone is moved, the bright light of hope bursts forth. Hope has real power. You see, hope is not just wishful thinking. Hope is knowing through faith that things can and will change. Hope is knowing that every problem has a solution. Every cloud has a silver lining. Every challenge can be overcome. Hope brings life. Death was defeated and life was reborn on that first Easter morning when Mary discovered the empty tomb. And our hope will never die because we know that Jesus still moves stones. Happy Easter. Amen.